In the streets of Moscow, a blanket of snow hides a political storm slowly brewing in Russia. The boiling point, last December's parliamentary elections, in which Prime Minister Vladimir Putin's political party was accused of voting fraud. Demonstrators have taken to the streets since then. Their demand, new elections and political justice. <laughs> Igor and Katya have taken part in these protests. They live in Moscow and are interior designers. They're part of Russia's middle class, a class seen to have greatly prospered these past 12 years under Putin's regime. But they disagree. The realization that things are not getting better but getting worse has been accumulating over the past 12 years, during a period when all the power has remained in the same hands. The Duma elections were like a catalyst because many people voted thinking their choice would count and it would be fair and there'd be no election fraud. That's why we went to vote. But it didn't work out that way. And we discovered how votes were counted and we realized the real outcome we were presented with. It left us with lots of questions. We realized we have to change the situation. Changing the situation, or rather the current political landscape, which has featured this man, Vladimir Putin, for the last 12 years. From 2000 to 2008, he was president and for the last four years, prime minister. And now he's running for president once again. The elections are on the 4th of March. We defend the dignity of our country and every one of its citizens. Truth is with us. Victory will be ours and we will prevail. Truth and victory, words that ring false for anti-Putin demonstrators, not only because of voting fraud allegations, but because Putin has taken it for granted that they want him as president again. This is the Lenta.ru newsroom. Here, journalist Ilaya Azar shows a video which was posted on the 4th of December, the date of the Duma elections. In this video, he and an election observer are trying to interview people who were caught stuffing ballots. This video has had more than one million hits on YouTube. For Azar, it shows how the ruling political class has lost credibility. The politicians were very surprised, but now they're coming to terms with this, because suddenly, out of the blue, a lot of people took to the streets. It was impossible to imagine this even in November. Everyone saw frauds taking place, but people were not prepared to see it even if they had their suspicions. Yet the Internet and a rise in civil consciousness played an important role. So they saw what happened and they were fed up. Many of those fed up are from Russia's middle class, a class which emerged during Putin's time in power and which makes up 20% of Russia's 143 million citizens. Their quality of life improved not only because Putin brought stability to Russia, but also because of a rise in economic growth thanks to the country's natural resources. This is the headquarters for the 36.6 pharmaceutical company. Its CEO is a highly successful businessman. He denies this idea that the middle class is biting the hand which fed them this prosperity, namely Putin. I do respect Putin because he did make enormous changes in the country, especially in the beginning. He put things in order and the changes were massive. But nowadays for me, it is so obvious that the existing political and economic systems need to be changed, and first of all, the political system. And to my mind, Putin just doesn't have that feeling. This is Mikhail Prokhorov. He's running for president. Here, Euronews catches up with him at the start of his campaign. He's surrounded by supporters who see him as the man who can bring political change. 
but critics have called him a Kremlin project, a candidate to help divide the opposition. And as Russia's third richest man, can he truly represent the middle class? I am not rich from my childhood. Uh, we live uh, in, in the Soviet Union. We have no money. And I start my career as a middle class businessman. So I know all the problems of the people. And I know what is important for the Russia to have middle class as a majority of our people. And no Kremlin project. You do not in any way like this idea. It bothers you. Once again, I'm a project for my parents. But while Prokhorov defends his political independence, one question looms over the upcoming elections. Is there really a viable alternative to Vladimir Putin? Elena Volnova doesn't think so. She lives in Moscow with her husband and two daughters. She's a doctor. Her husband works in a company owned by one of Russia's oligarchs. For Elena, memories of the chaos of the 90s following the breakup of the Soviet Union are still vivid. Long queues, little food, unpaid salaries and corruption were rampant. She's grateful to Putin and is voting for him. I'm voting for stability in our economic and political lives. Right now, I can't name a single person or politician who's fit for office and can be an alternative to Putin. Of course, I'd like to see more of the reforms which were started continue and be implemented. But I don't want any catastrophic changes because for the last 100 years, there have been a lot of those events in Russian history. I don't want civil war, I don't want property to change hands, and I don't want to return to the 1990s. No return to the 90s, a decade folk singer Leonid Aganovich knows very well. He says despite the difficult times, it was also an exciting time when everything was open to change. And today, despite the wealth, there's poverty. One out of every seven Russians lives on less than five euros a day. Here in his song, the words are light, even quirky, about a rooster watching the carrots. Whether there's a hidden message in the lyrics isn't clear, but what is clear is that there's a growing call for change. If the process is taking place, I suppose it indicates that there is a movement underneath. And if at least we have been swimming in murky waters for the last 10 years, we have to navigate towards clean water. I'm not saying that life is going to be better, because nice food on the table doesn't mean nice living, because everything else is in a dire condition. Despite the growing call for change, even Putin's critics agree he will most likely win the presidential election. A sign that for a majority of Russians, he has yet to wear out his welcome mat at the Kremlin.